Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. We're going to talk about a game on the Nintendo DS, the original DS here. This is my light. Um, this is a game that I actually got a little while ago, and it was after I saw some recommendation of hidden gems for the DS. Um, the game is Freedom Wings, and it's a really cool game, and it's, it's kind of different. Um, what you do in this, you're just flying around World War II kind of fictional, almost like the Ace Combat series idea, but what's really weird is the control scheme. You can play it, I'll set the cartridge down, or the container down, you can play it using, you know, D-pad and the buttons and all that kind of stuff, or it has this sort of automatic pilot mode where you really just let the game play itself and you kind of just give it directions with the stylus, I want you to go here, I want you to fight that guy, etc. I'll show you in a second. You would think that makes it really, really dull. I mean, if the game is doing all the flying for you, why are you even playing it? It's actually surprisingly my preferred way to play. So uh, let's fire it up and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, Freedom Wings. Let's give it a start to get the uh, storyline here. I'm going to use the touchscreen control. I will show you how to play it with the D-pad in a sec. Before I continue my game, now I've been playing this for a while and I've actually got pretty far through the story, so my airplane is pretty good, which is better because you don't want to be seeing me going through all the, the little middling sorties before you unlock the really good airplane. But what I will say right off the bat is definitely go into the options, and definitely turn off the music. I mean, wait a minute, I didn't do that right. You have to do everything with like a tap or two. Okay, so yes, turn it off and then accept. Ah, you will thank me later for that. The music's not bad, but it's very repetitive. I guess because it's just a DS game, it's only got so much room on the cartridge. So the one or two songs pretty much play constantly all the time and they will drive you bonkers. So turn off the music first. And um, slightly annoying thing, even when you, even though you can save your progress in this game, as I have with mine, you have to turn off the music every single time. So anyway, let's uh, get into it here. Let's continue my game. All right, so here I am by the bay, uh, enjoying my, uh, I think I'm in one of the sort of secret hideouts, I can't remember. Um, so your options are, now airport will get us to where we can go to the hangar, I can have a look at my airplane there, and I've actually got different airplanes I can choose. As I say, I've, um, I've kind of gone through different parts of the game now, so I can select all the different ones here. I think maybe this is the first plane you start with, I can't remember. Oh, no, no, not that one. Uh, I'll know it when I see it. Mm, no, that was the second one. It was this one. Anyway, let's just get to the FR-1, which is the really good airplane that I lock unlocked, and uh, proceed from there. Um, you do have options to actually improve the armor, the power rating, you know, how fast your plane can go, its wing capability, which I believe gives you more control. Um, then you've got armaments such as a Gatling gun. You can also have bombs, which I don't have any currently right now. Um, and you can return to the previous menu. Now I'm going to show you takeoff in a second. But you also, now there's nobody that I can talk to at this uh, bay that I'm currently at. But if there were, if there were parts of the storyline, you know, go to the north and go and check out the base. Or I've heard rumors of hijackers in far to the east, that kind of thing. You can go to the cafe here and there might or might not be somebody to talk to. There's nobody here right now, but if there was... A uh, little sort of pseudo anime guy would sit up there and uh, I could chat away. I'd have some various dialogue options. Really, really cool stuff. There's a nice little storyline involved here, but there's nobody here right now. Um, other than the cafe, uh, you can go to the shop to do your purchasing of your parts. I think I don't really... Do I have enough money? No. If they were, if they were available to me, they'd be a lighter color. So not to worry on that front. Um, restructure. Oh yeah, and you can sort of level up your armor. Mine is level four, and my maneuvering is up. You can, um, basically you can level up your plane or you can uh, outfit it with better weapons and armament. I don't believe those move with you to the new airplane. So if you buy, if you soup up the first plane you've got, you see there where the bonuses are. Uh, I don't recall if those then move to the new airplane. It's been a while since I've played, can't recall. 
But anyway, that would be the shop. Uh, let's go now. So in the airport, I did the hangar already. The office is where you can do your saving and uh, exiting of the game. It gives you your current stats, etc. Let's just go back. And the um, final option in the airport is uh, you can play against uh, a buddy with, uh, you need to have two uh, games. I think you both do, you can do download play. So I think you and a buddy can actually fight against each other uh, with the wireless system of the Nintendo DS. Never really done that because I don't know anybody else with a DS, but that option is there. Anyway, let's take off because the graphics in this game for a DS title these look really nice. I highly recommend you try this thing out here. Um, and I will show you controlling with the D-pad, but honestly, most of the time, I like the automatic pilot mode. So let's just give this a whirl here. Let's take off. And it will do it automatically. You can see he's already taking off for me. That's very nice of him. We're going to climb. You've actually got an altimeter here, speedometer there. Um, and down here is your map, which shows your the blue with the little red arrow showing what direction you're going. There's that bay I was looking at. There's the graphics up top. Really nice. Uh, it doesn't look that stellar right now, but wait till I uh, take somebody on. Uh, I can increase or decrease my speed like this. And as you see at the top, as I move that control up and down, it is moving. Whoops. Well, hit the wrong button there. Um, yeah, as I'm moving this lever up and down here, it is showing the graphics at the top are moving up and down as well. You're going to notice whenever I'm trying to land, I'm going to let the AI do it because this thing is all over the darn map. And I think if I was trying to do that, oh, let's take that guy on. It would be very hard to do. Now, you probably can't make out. There's a little red square. Oh, you can make it up. Got him. Um, now you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, you just let the AI do all that for you. Honestly, that's a better way to go. I'll show you why in a second. So in addition to speed, you can also manually increase or decrease your altitude like that, which is really good. Oops, let's just level off. There we go. And let's take on another guy. Again, I'll sort of slide this close so you can see maybe some of the combat. Okay. Um, when I do a bit more combat here, I'm going to switch views. You can actually do that with, uh, where is it here? This button for the camera. You can actually cycle through different perspectives. So you got the airplane kind of doing the camera mode, just fly away. Or you can kind of rotate around the airplane. Or, oh, here comes a bad guy. You can see there now the camera is still rotating about around the airplane, but uh, the AI is going to take on the fight. Can make for kind of a cool little cinematic. The graphics look really good. The camera is not doing it justice, but the airplane has a nice amount of detail around it. Really, really like what they've done here. Next view is kind of a um, chasing view. Like if if we encounter another bad guy here. It'll keep him in the distance and me in the foreground. Let's see if I can maybe... Let's head north. There we go. Let's see what that'll do. There we go. So here's somebody. Tap him. Watch this. If I live... Or if he lives long enough... I'm going to do the... Oh, I didn't do it. Well, um, with luck I'll meet somebody and then we can kind of fly around each other. And I'll show you what the benefit of that view is. And then one more, you're back to kind of the standard view, which is handy because you've got all your controls and it gives you your ammunition, etc. Another bad guy. Let's take him on. I'll uh, cycle through the views here. See if I can get that one for you. Oh, I'm just too good in this airplane. Um, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the basic guts of it. Now, I'm on lock mode self, where I have to actually tap on any bad guys that I want to encounter or take on. Um, I would also use the um, tapping with the stylus in order to land. I'll show you that in a second. Get him. Ooh. Oh no, I'm dead. Okay, well, let's load another game here. And we're back at our bay. And again, I have turned off the music. You will thank me for that later. Um, so, let me show you. I am going to try and do it with the D-pad now. I'm just... Uh, Put the stylus away, and we will launch. But of course, I've left it in automatic mode, so as soon as I get in there, 
So let me take it off and hit the manual here. So now I am actually using the D-pad and it's moved me down to the other screen. Where's the land? There it is. So yes, you have full control and you can shoot with the B button. I think uh, it's either A or Y locks on to bad guys when they show up. Now the map is up at the top, so I gotta keep my eyes on that. Um, I've got my ailerons here, or rudder. And I should actually keep my nose up from the uh, altimeter there so I don't end up going into the ground. I can increase my throttle. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice, but honestly, okay, let's try and take on this bad guy here. And I'll show you why I usually leave it in automatic mode. There we go. Ah, now let me just change to my other view that I was trying to get you to. There we go. See, now is doing that chase mode thing where I need to line myself up. Ah, oh, sneaky bugger. But really gorgeous graphics. This thing looks great. Highly recommend it, and honestly, with the... I'm going to have to change the view again, because I'm going to hit the ground. Um, yeah, I usually... I'm going to die, aren't I? I'll show you in a second where you can find your stats, but I've got two of these guys taking me on now, so this is not going to work out well here. Yeah, now I got a third one. Okay, let's um, let's stop there and I'm toast anyway. All right, gonna let the AI do it this time, and I'm actually gonna put it onto lock mode instead of being self. Put it on automatic. That way, it's gonna take on bad guys no matter what comes our way. Let's increase our speed. And I don't know, let's head northwest here. Let me just see if I can move this closer so you can watch what this looks like, because it's a really nice looking game. The landscape has some really nice details. I mean, it's it's a DS, so you know, you're not gonna get uh, heavily detailed landscapes and the cities do look a little flat and dull, but I think it's a really nice looking for a DS title. There it is, there's a bad guy. I'm just gonna let him do all the work for me here. Come on. There you go, that's him toast. Uh, let me show you also how I know my stats. So up here, we have my damage rating. So I'm in the green, it's gonna slowly wear down to the red, and then when it's a zero, I'm toast. And I've got a fuel gauge as well. Here comes another bad guy. So I'm doing alright. Again, you would think, well, why do you just let the AI do all this for you? I think, honestly, it's kind of a nice, relaxing way to play a game that looks really nice. And, oh, there's a, a random encounter. Who we got here? Uh, huh? It's you again. Why do you show up at such inconvenient times? There's no choice. I'm going to try to take out... Try out my plane's top speed. Oh, this is a fast guy. All right, well, I'm going to just switch view again so that we're doing that chase mode. And we'll just kind of watch the combat ensue because honestly, it's a lot more fun for me to watch the enemy being shot by my sort of AI. Like, look at that. You get this really excellent sort of cinematic mode going on. Um, luckily, now... It, the game is very forgiving. You do sort of fly through some canyons at a certain point, and I have definitely had myself in the drink or bumping up against the ground. And the nice thing is it's a very arcadey style. You just bounce. You can't crash. It's, it's almost impossible. In fact, um, I'll try landing in a minute, and you'll see it's almost impossible to do any damage to yourself with the uh, the landscape, which is kind of nice. I prefer that. Now, let's see. Come on, line him up. Line him up. Ooh, he's a hurting unit now. But yeah, some of these characters that I've run into have actually been 
you know, help, help, I'm under attack, and I've, I've gone and protected the uh, cargo plane from the bad guys, and then when I get back to the, the uh, bay, there'll be that person that I helped sitting in the, uh, in the bar. Ooh, he's getting kind of low. Pull up, pull up, there we go. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice. The, the storytelling is, is very well done here. Come on. Let's just finish him off. Oh, you're so close. You're so close. This is why I kind of prefer to play it in this mode. It's like I'm watching a movie. I can increase or decrease his speed, up, uh, increase or decrease his altitude, but the AI is doing everything else for me, and I kind of like it. It's a nice looking game. I can sort of, sort of sit back and relax and enjoy. Even if I did normally want to take on the D-pad. Oh, rats still need tweaking, but you'll be mine soon. I'll retreat for now. Sorry, but maybe next time. Yeah. And of course, he's got the better speed, so he's definitely going to get away. Let's instead take on his buddy. Oh, I'm not doing too well on the uh, damage rating. I think I might want to land after this. No, we're dead again. He got me. He did not get me. That's me. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, great. Let's just switch view. And I'm going to land if I can. Um, now, what to do to land? Let's take this. So this button here, if I, if I hit on the... Um, menu right now with my stylus it's going to tell the airplane where to go i actually want to lock that so that i can now pan around this blue thing here is my base so let's just click on it actually i gotta take that off i need to get it into my range of view and you can see i'm coming up to a um, mountain range here but once i get over that You know what? I just realized. I was thinking, hey, I thought I was in a lot of damage there. How come I've got full ammunition and stuff again? You know what I realized? The game has swapped me to my next plane down. So even though my gray plane died, this is like the blue one, the next one in my hangar. I've never actually had that happen before. So now let's just take on this guy. Interesting. So each of the planes that you have in your hangar are actually ones that will... Let me just... Uh, am I going fast enough? Yes, I am. Um, they're kind of like your extra lives. So as you as you die, you will use up your best plane, then your next best plane, etc. Huh. Never really knew that. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get away from these guys and actually land. So what I've done is there's my two pirate bad guys. I've found the landing bay, which is that blue... Um, uh, icon for an airport and I've just tapped it with the controller and now it's gonna land now I will let the AI land me this time and then if I'm feeling particularly brave I might try and land with the d-pad but you're gonna see that's not easy to do uh, you're gonna notice this thing is gonna be all over the darn sky up and down and all over the place and if I was trying to do this with the d-pad you're gonna see it's it's very complicated look at this here he goes Imagine trying to do this with that D-pad and with the uh, throttle up and down. Not easy. I have managed it, but I wouldn't really describe it as being fun. Here we go. There's the landing strip. Come on, you can do it. And... Boom. Awesome. Welcome back. All right, so there you go. Um, I think I'll leave it there because this is a bit lengthy already, but it gives you an idea of uh, what the gameplay is like. I honestly prefer playing Freedom Wings with the cinematic kind of just tap tap on the with the D pad or with the stylus. Let the let the AI do all the work for you because it's a lot more fun to kind of watch the game than it is to try and fly the game. The story is pretty cool. It's got a neat anime style, the gorgeous looking graphics for, for a DS game. Again, it's it's been surpassed since then by um, the 3DS and various other things, PSP, etc. But for something that I had heard about um, and just thought, well, I don't really know if I'm going to enjoy this or not, um, I've ended up enjoying it a heck of a lot. So there it is. There is Freedom Wings on the original Nintendo DS. Highly recommended. 
Um, if you can find it somewhere for cheap, definitely try it out. It's a lot of fun. Until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.